Yeah, I think a transplant is uh, still a very valuable uh, treatment option and should be offered to every patient. Uh, there may be patients, uh, and uh, we in Europe uh, prefer transplant um, uh, frontline as frontline treatment, but there may be patients who achieve a very good remission, uh, MRD negative, after induction. And they, uh, uh, I think they still should uh, collect stem cells, and transplant may be an option uh, uh, as treatment at relapse, and, and it's a very good option if there's a long interval between first-line treatment and relapse, then transplant is fantastic. And it's a short treatment and it's a highly effective treatment. Yeah, you're, the question is what is the optimal timing for transplant? Um, so again, there are different philosophies and it depends very much on patient perception. From the new studies, we know that, uh, which have recently been uh, presented, the French and the Holland study, uh, we know that we improve the quality of response, we improve uh, the uh, rate of MRD negativity with upfront transplant, and MRD negativity correlates with better survival. But at this point of time, we just uh, can say that transplant improves progression-free survival. The data on overall survival do not show a difference between transplant and conventional therapy, mean, meaning conventional therapy given at, um, at frontline and then transplant at relapse. So we have to wait for more mature data when it comes to overall survival. But uh, our hope is that, and that is what is known, is that uh, good risk myeloma patients benefit most from good treatments, so transplant is an excellent treatment. So the hope is that after four to five or six years, the curves will diverge and those um, um, who are, uh, present with good risk features will show a benefit in overall survival. But I must say, at this point of time, this is wishful thinking and the data are not there to say this or to, to say this is uh, um, cut in stone. So we have to wait for that. But the benefit in getting a better quality of response is substantial and then, and also the treatment duration is short. So um, it's shorter than 12 cycles of uh, any induction therapy because you just need four cycles and transplant and then maintenance, or you can put in consolidation after transplant maintenance, but it's shorter than 12 cycles or 18 cycles of any uh, regimen. There's this increasing debate about the role of stem cell transplant in myeloma. And this is a question that comes up whenever a new drug or a new combination with high degree of efficacy uh, is adopted into practice. Now with transplant alone, before the new drugs came along, we had maybe about a third of the patients getting a complete response uh, to treatment. Now we can get that or even better complete response rate with the triplet regimens that we use nowadays. So rightly so, the question of transplant has again come up. What we know from some of the recent phase three trials is that transplant still plays a very important role in the management of multiple myeloma. The best example is the French study, which looked at patients getting botasumib, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone as their initial therapy, and then patients were randomized to get either an autologous stem cell transplant or continuing on the botasumib, lenalidomide, dexamethasone, and all patients then received some additional consolidation with the same triplet regimen for two cycles, and they all went on lenalidomide maintenance. So if you look at the control arm of that study, which is lenalidomide, botasumib, dexamethasone, in initial therapy followed by lenalidomide maintenance, is what people often would do if they didn't go to a stem cell transplant. And in that study, it was clearly shown that when you get stem cell transplant, you get a deeper response and you get longer progression-free survival. And we know from prior studies that early transplant also translates to a better quality of life. Now, in this particular French study, there was no difference in the overall survival, which is consistent with what we have seen in the past. So it tells you that, yes, transplant early or delayed can still have um, a positive impact on the outcome of these patients, but transplant should not be abandoned as a modality for patients with myeloma. So I think transplant is, continues to be a critical part of the, trans, the myeloma therapy in patients who are eligible to undergo stem cell transplant. Our goal should be to get every eligible patient to a stem cell transplant. At least in the initial stage, we should collect the stem cells with the intent to transplant them at some point during the course of the disease. 
Now the second important aspect from the transplant is increasingly we have treatments which can have cumulative effect on the bone marrow. So it is not unusual that somebody who's been on continuously on therapy for three to four years, now their bone marrow reserve has really gone down and they are unable to tolerate the med new medications. So doing a stem cell transplant at that time has a dual role of controlling the disease but also reconstituting their bone marrow which allows them to get treatments which they otherwise would not have been. Now the other kind of the side of the coin is when do we do the transplant? The ideal time to do the transplant um, based on these studies, again the early transplant clearly improves the progression free survival compared to no doing a transplant as part of the initial therapy. However, for whatever reason if such patient does not want an early transplant, collecting the stem cells and doing the transplant later on still gives a comparable overall survival. So at least one of the two approaches should be considered.